Hi, everybody. Welcome to the College of Fine and Performing Arts uh, Overview Information for Admitted Students session. Uh, the session is going to be led by our Dean, Kit Spicer. I'm Chris Casquillo. I'm just running the sort of technical end of this. Uh, so, you know, sort of uh, muting and unmuting and then those sorts of things. Um, uh, just so you know, we are recording the meeting. Um, it's only for Western's internal use. It won't be distributed or put anywhere. Um, if for some reason you don't want your video recorded, just turn your video off. And if you don't want your audio recorded, you can send us um, messages in the chat window. And also with us today uh, are Ashley Van Curler, who is the advisor for the theater and dance areas. And we have Leanne Fraun, with the music department and uh, they're going to help answer some of the questions that are particular to those departments. There's still a few people coming in. Uh, for the folks that are just joining us now, we just mentioned that we're recording the meeting. So if you're concerned about having your video or audio recorded, you can just turn those off. Um, you can send us questions in the chat and so on. And uh, we're gonna give a brief overview of a few things and then mostly just have an open Q&A session and we'll answer questions as best we can and share links in the chat. And I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Dean Kit Spicer who's gonna lead uh, the session today, thanks. Thank you, Chris, and welcome to you all um, in this brave new world in which we're living. Um, I've got uh, some things to say about the college. Uh, I'm gonna do that in a minute. Um, what I'm interested in is I'm assuming that most, if not all of you, are um, online for your high school career as it kind of folds up here. And I'd really like to hear from you just real quickly, how are you finding this? And anybody, just join one in. Um, I'll go. Um, yeah. it's, it's been a little hard transitioning from like, being at the school all the time for all of my classes to strictly online. I personally don't have a lot of classes, so it's not been too crazy, but my little sister's a sophomore in high school and she's had a full workload. I just have like drama and um, sports medicine and stuff online. So I've been pretty solid, but my sister's like on the computer like all day trying to do schoolwork and I feel bad for her. <laughs> yeah, what about the rest of you? Especially, and I'm especially interested if you're taking some kind of arts you know, music, dance, theater. Studio. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I'm Anna. Um, I have, I'm in six classes right now. So that's kind of a nightmare at the moment. <laughs> um, but for arts, I'm on my like thespian executive board. So how it's affecting like that kind of stuff is that we have to, it's hard because our school doesn't want us doing elections right now because of like equity concerns. Um, so our future is kind of like messy and with the funds that we lost from having to cancel our show, it's not the easiest to handle within like treasury and reports and all that kind of stuff, but we'll get through it. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now with the art situation. Okay. Is there any, is there any talk about trying to do a, a uh, toned down version of the show online? Um, we thought about that for a while. Uh, unfortunately, most it, it, it was too messy um, because it, we were doing Legally Blonde and mm. so huge cast. Yeah. And it, I mean, the thing is, we were only we only had to pay like half of the original like licensing fee and whatnot. So that made it better. And we had made a lot of money from our musical the previous year. Yeah. So we're like, we'll stay up and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just we won't have as much money for like the musical next year. Um, but yeah. Yeah, okay. We did Legally Blonde, what, three years ago, four years ago? Something mm -hmm. like that. Um, I'm so kind of continuing. I'm secretary of our drama club and we're having a very similar issue with elections and trying to transition them online and figuring out how we want. We have like a big award show at the end of the year for like, we call right. them the Willies. Hmm. Um, and we're trying to figure out if we can do that online because that's like a huge thing. We do like senior speeches. Um, we also have to cancel our show, but we were going to do an online, we were going to do working this year, um, but MTI told us we couldn't do an online version. We were very like committed and um, we were going to do like put all of the recordings together and have it be like a thing with Zoom choreography and it would have been cool, but <laughs> <Yeah>. very ambitious. 
but we didn't get the permission, so we had to cancel as well. Mm, I'm sorry to hear that. Who else? We've got time for a couple more. So my school is doing Big Fish as the musical for this year, and we've transitioned into doing a radio play version um, where everyone mm -hmm. sends in their audios and um, they're all being mixed together. And that's working like really well. Um, there's actually someone else here in the call that can speak to that on a more personal level. But I'm in the pit band for that. And we've switched from being having a full band that's accompanying the singers and the dance choreography to just having piano tracks, which has really impacted a lot of people. But it's probably like the best solution because it's really hard to find motivation for a lot of people. So having um, it, we're really like doing pretty well, I think, in um, sorting things out and making the musical actually happen, which I think is really cool. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm working on that same show. I was supposed to be the assistant director and dance captain and also working on sets and sound and lights and stuff. Um, and I'm also now editing that show into the podcast radio play type thing. And it's very weird trying to coordinate 30 plus actors and getting them to record all their parts. And then we have, I think, three people working on editing it. And it's, it's a very weird experience, but I'm really glad that we are still able to do some version of it. That's great. Would you let us know where to find it when you get it done? Yeah, yeah. I don't know where we're putting it right now, but when we okay. figure it out, I'll yeah, let you know. I'd love to listen to it. Who else? Anybody else? I think one of the things that we're finding is that, um, you know, this has been so disruptive and we're having to try any number of new things like you just guys just mentioned. Um, and that I imagine that some of these things will probably remain with us. Um, even if we go back to, a, you know, quote unquote, more normal kind of existence. Uh, some of the things we're learning are just so, um, so cool in many ways that I think kind of it's a new way of thinking about what we're doing and how we're teaching. Uh, and, and learning. And I think that's going to come out of that some, I, I think, some really significant changes in what we do. All for the good. Of course, I'm an optimist. So who else? Anybody else? An anybody doing big band or something like that or jazz? All right. Okay. Um, Let me, yep, go ahead. I'm from Richmond, Virginia. And I play the Barry sax, and our wait, jazz wait, 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 wait! I missed you're from, you're from Richmond. Yeah, I'm from Charlottesville. Really? I was just in Charlottesville this weekend hiking. That's so cool. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but I play the Barry. Our band director has been taking all of our players' recordings for a certain song, Symphony and Rifts. If you've heard of it, and um. We've been compiling them into our piece that we were going to play for our final concert. So it's kind of cool that she's into editing that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay, so for, real quickly, the, the, uh, the College of Fine and Performing Arts, um, we have, we consider ourselves the, uh, the largest of the small colleges at the university. Uh, and so we have about 800, a little more majors. Um, and that's pretty consistent over time. Um, we graduate somewhere around 220 of those every year, uh, and then kind of, kind of, you know, fill in with folks like you in the first year. We pretty much, you know, could kind of keep it at that number um, uh, because we don't have our space is pretty much used, pretty much um, full, and so we try to be a little bit selective in. Um, who we invite to come, you know, learn with us and teach us, and um, it's worked out really well. I'm right now reviewing um, scholarship letters that scholarships that come out of my office, the dean's office, and um, I'm continually reminded every year when I read these of the uh, the talents and the passion and the and the skill that you folks bring to us. Um, and along with that, it's changed over the, I, this is my um, seventh year here. 
Um, and over the years, I've noticed a change. And one of the changes is that the letters um, students write for the scholarship, um, they uh, are more and more um, including your entrepreneurial efforts to monetize whatever your art is. And it's been really fun to read this year. And this is everything from, you know, I, I do silkscreen t-shirts for people. I sell purses or, you know, silkscreen purses. Um, I give lessons to, um, you know, young children. And one I read this morning was um, somebody who gave piano lessons, but to, to adults uh, in a senior center home who these people had played piano when they were kids and hadn't played for 40 or 50 years and wanted to take it back up again. So it's been really kind of, um, for me anyway, um, fun to read these because it reinforces this notion that um, what I consider our college to be is we are offering a professional education in the arts within a liberal arts venue. And part of that professional education is to encourage you um, as a member of the community to think about and have resources about how are we gonna make actually a living doing this. Uh, and I think more and more, uh, it, the, the virus aside at the moment, uh, until the virus, okay, I think kind of more and more people were actually, um, actually really engaged in that notion of that, yes, I can do my art and follow my passion and I can figure out ways to make some money doing that and make a living. Um, you know, again, the virus is gonna upset a little bit of that. Uh, what we had, I think kind of, um, it, Chris's snap is on someplace on the frequently asked questions. Okay, so we did a survey about three years ago now, maybe four years ago, and over 900 alums uh, of the college responded, uh, going all the way back to 1972. Um, and um, number one, found that uh, the vast majority of these people um, would do it again, and they would recommend, you know, the, the program to others. Uh, another survey that the university did um, showed last year that 86% of the students who graduate from the College of Fine and Performing Arts have a job. And another 8% have been accepted to graduate school or some other kind of formal training. So 94% of the folks that graduated this past year are um, right, gainfully doing something. Uh, and so I think, you know, one of the things we kind of, again, pride ourselves on is, is we have this idea of, yes, there's education and there's training and there's this notion of a professional life. So, and you know, what I try to convince people of is that folks like you are just like anybody else in the profession. You are making stuff. You are doing things. You are presenting stuff to the public. Um, and you know, that notion of following your passion, following your dream um, becomes critically important, I think, uh, in, in what you do. The, um, the college is made up of the departments of art and art history, uh, design, uh, music, and then theater and dance. Um, and we have a um, a minor called Arts, Enterprise, and Cultural Innovation, which is a mouthful, um, but it basically is what we're, I was just been talking about. It takes you through a one course a quarter starting your junior year, and it's all geared towards this idea of who am I as an artist? What do I bring to the world? What do I bring to problem solving groups? Um, and you know, how can I, and then, you know, kind of nuts and bolts of business, and then trying to bring it all together towards your senior year. Um, the importance of of the creative um, economy and culture, uh, again, is I think being recognized um, more so than ever um, in any number, in a variety of ways. And I think it begins with the notion that um, people are beginning to realize that folks like you who have this creative um, bent and passion, um, approach the world uh, differently than say an accountant or uh, um, a management consultant. Uh, and by differently, I don't mean anything negative at all about that, okay? You approach it in a very positively different way. And people are learning that the way you see things, the way you parse problems, the way you bring to bear um, your talents and your skills and your, your mindset for your discipline and your art, um, has a place that is useful. And my best example of this is a couple of years ago, um, the president of the 
University of Wisconsin at Stevens Point um, uh, laid out a, a, a mandate, and it was that if if you had any any group that was applying for a grant, whether it was a federal grant, a state grant, or a private grant, and if it was sciences or the you know languages or whatever, 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 you had to have an artist on your group. You had to have an artist. So if you were a, you know, a biology professor and three or four of you were getting together and you were going to apply for some great big national science foundation, you had to have an artist from the community sit on this group. And the president's whole thing was that that artist is going to push the group to think differently uh, and more uh, acutely and more positively. Uh, and um, I haven't heard how this worked out, but it was just a great idea, I think. So one of the things that we have, uh, you know, kind of, I'm sure you've looked at the discipline we have, uh, you know, your discipline and who we are. Um, and uh, the, th the, the other thing, this notion of professionalism is kind of, like I say, runs through what we do. But the other aspect is um, it, we've become increasingly uh, interdisciplinary um, or multidisciplinary. And I'm sure you folks represent this, that there, you are probably engaged in several um, artistic endeavors or medium or whatever. Um, and the students, I think one of the things that's been really fun to see is that the faculty we've hired over the last four or five years are um, are also uh, interdisciplinary oriented. And so they search each other out um, and they do really neat things, you know, combining disciplines. Um, and kind of one of the most interesting this past year was a new um, a woman who was a, a sculpture professor, also does performance art with sculptures. And she got together with the dance professor and uh, the dance students kind of uh, engaged themselves with the art that Sasha was making and they all took it down to Seattle and you could still do this kind of thing and presented it at a local venue there and it got just great write-ups and so they ultimately ended up there was sculpture students, dance students, and music students all in a performance um, and that kind, of that kind of thing right now is um, for me anyway uh, just really heartwarming to see because uh, I've pushed interdisciplinary work on my entire career and I think these two things, this notion of professionalism and this notion of interdisciplinary work um, are kind of beginning to combine themselves with one another. Um, I think one of the other things that I like about our college in particular is that you are not stuck in the classroom. Um, you know, we demand that you get out, uh, that you take part, that you um, work in the community, whether that's in the community of Western or in the community of Bellingham. Um, at, that um, we, I would use the polite word and say we encourage you to um, engage. Uh, and I think that, again, most of you do that on your very own and very, you know, kind of excitedly do that. Again, one of the things reading these scholarship letters is the notion of um, that engagement with the greater community um, rather than just, you know, the individual artist, him or herself. And so I think kind of, it all comes up to me kind of, like it's kind of, it's, the college is a very vibrant place. Um, and it's vibrant because of students like you and the faculty and staff who kind of are willing to um, basically just continually to try new ideas and new things. Which is again, one of the reasons I think that when we are, you know, when we come out of this whole kind of shutdown, I think there's gonna be some um, pretty substantial new ideas and, and new ways of thinking about what we're doing. There's also somewhere, and Chris, you can correct me, somewhere 30 or more student clubs that have something to do with the arts. Um, there are, now the last count I ran, there were, there were 40. Hmm. Um, and there's a list. I'll put a link in the chat that lists to that category at um, at the Associated Students has a link with it categorized. But there are clubs outside of the category. That's the other thing that I would suggest is they have them organized, and they're like these are all you know arts and um, performing clubs. But there are things that look like arts and performing. Like the last time I checked, there was a um, a radio theater club that for a while wasn't listed in that category, it was listed in some other category. So look around, you know, you'll find stuff you like. Yeah. 
Good. Yeah. And so and just I'm going to finish. I think uh, this is the fourth week we've been doing this. And um, I just have to say that I'm just really proud of all the students and the staff and the faculty and how they've engaged this. Uh, I think we've made it through the kind of bumpy start where, you know, how do you turn the computer on and where do you find Zoom and how do you do this kind of thing? And um, I think now we're at the point where the work is really being done. Uh, and um, like I said, people are engaging it uh, in um, a way that is both passionate um, and professionally oriented. Um, so I'm just really, really proud of what people are doing here. And I think at the end of this, um, we will put together some kind of um, debriefing about what we learned and, and, and what we might say about that. So that, you know, again, that's about it for me. You are more than welcome to email me. Um, and it's a spicerc2 at www.edu if you have questions. And just put down um, in the subject line, what are we calling this? Um, what are we calling what we're doing right now? Let's call it, um, you know, new, new admitted student orientation. I don't know. I, we okay. have like uh, uh, Ashley yep. and Leanne are student advisors. So they're the folks that um, fortunately for you, you will actually work with day to day uh, within our college to answer these questions and so on. Um, so they, they roll out um, Kit and I sometimes for a dog and pony show. Um, because it, it, it deepens the bench. But the, the real frontline folks with the good answers, we have a couple of them in the room, thankfully. So yeah, yeah we'll call it the admitted students orientation, but it's a lot to type, you know. Yeah. Admitted know. Zoom, just something. There like you that. go. Admitted yeah. Zoom. So I, I'm just gonna open it up. And again, um, you know, particular questions you can, if you have for your own self or just thinking about things, um, please just, um, let us know what you're thinking. How many productions? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Anna. <laughs> sorry. sorry, Nikki. Um, how many like productions does the um, program itself do? Because I know there's like student run stuff and then there's like more faculty directed and all that kind of stuff. And I wasn't exactly sure how that worked. Um, are you thinking more just for theater specifically, yeah, dance specifically, yeah. kind of that? We do five theatrical productions a year as a department. Um, mm -hmm. That includes musical, um, at least one a year. Uh, we do what I lovingly called oldies but goodies. So the Shakespeare or the Romans or the Greeks. Um, mm -hmm. A contemporary, a new work of some sort, whether it's a devised piece or um, one that's like currently being um, along the process of getting um, licensed and published. Um, and then a freebie slot, depending on what's needed. And then uh, our biggest club production, um, student theater productions, they usually do two or three a quarter, which can range from stage readings of student works to full-fledged productions. Um, we've been talking in the chat about New Music, New Dance. That's a dance, music, and theater collaborative performance. That's once every fall. Plays for us, we do one every quarter. That's just a bunch of 10 minute scenes. Um, so there's a lot <laughs> that goes on. Um, and That's anything it. through the department or through the clubs, anyone can audition for. It doesn't need to specifically be for majors or for minors. So um, anyone's encouraged to get to come and audition for all of our shows. And that also works for crew. If, you, if you're not necessarily a performer, but you might want to look at maybe assistant directing or designing, or you really like the fly rail system come and talk to us, we can, we can get you working on any of our shows. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, I had a quick question, kind of bouncing off of that actually. So I'm going into hopefully a dance major, but I really enjoy um, theater. I've found a love for it. And my mom's like, don't do a theater, or do arts minor major, you know, get a useful degree, you know, all of that stuff. Um, but are there like theater, like, you can audition for the, um, musicals and stuff. Are there theater classes you can take that's not like through a major or minor? Um, all of our classes are open to everyone. We don't have any major or minor restrictions. That goes for theater and for dance. Um, okay. Dance, for any of the performance-based classes, we do ask for you to go through a placement just so that way we know that you have the necessary skills depending on what level you're set to. Mm -hmm. And we always do that the first day of fall quarter um, or like within that first week or um, 
We don't, we don't necessarily have campus visits right now, but um, normally we would also do that during a campus visit if that's easier. Um, and then for theater classes, um, we have a whole acting series um, that again is open. We of course give priority to majors at the higher level mm -hmm. since that's part of their degree path, but um, we have an intro to acting class anyone can register for and then can continue on that way or any of our tech classes dramatic writing as long as you have the necessary prerequisites completed okay. come hang out okay, um, thank you <laughs> we had someone talking in the chat earlier about like whether doing a theater minor um, was a good idea and it's a great option to start um, especially if you love doing theater in mm -hmm. high school or your communities um, to start there all of that stuff is required in the major so you can always start there and then build into it if that's something you're really interested in and the same thank with you. dance yeah, yeah. Um, kind of on the flip side of that, how much flexibility do you have to take classes outside of the program if you major in something theatrical? If that makes sense. I'm so sorry you cut out a little bit. Can you ask that question again? Yeah, how much flexibility do you have if you're majoring in um, a theater program to take classes outside of the performing arts program? Yeah, um, for us, it's pretty flexible. We Most of our courses are kind of lower in the credit load. They're three or four credits maybe compared to like a lot of the traditional history or Englishes are going to be five honkin credits. Um, and so a lot of it is going to be dependent on your schedule, of course. So if you have a bunch of chemistry labs, labs can kind of be tough to work around here and there, but um, with enough notice and with enough talking to advisors like Leanne and myself, we can kind of help coordinate those schedules along with you to make sure that you're able to take major minor courses that are necessary or um, stay within whatever guidelines you need, especially for undergraduate requirements, depending on what you've got left of those to do. Let me, let me jump in real quick. I think one of the other things that um, happens is, um, like most students, you probably have many, many different interests. And so a lot of our students who major in one of the college's um, programs will also pick up a minor, if not another major, um, in some other interest. Um, so I, again, reading these scholarship ones, um, a music student is, uh, who, who is interested in opera is also majoring in um, languages. And her goal is very specific. She wants to be a translator of uh, opera music. Uh, and so she's kind of using her languages in that sense. So there's a lot of opportunity to kind of, you know, kind of fulfill other interests in other, other you know, areas. Um, so I just wanted to touch base on Maya. She asked, what if anything, sorry Maya, but I think everyone probably has this question too. What if anything differs for those who did Running Start program with regards to being accepted as a theater major? Well, first I just wanted to talk about um, the differences in terms of Running Start so just because we have a lot of students probably on here that are music um, to or dance or designed to just kind of put them in there too. So a running start student would be a student who took college or what we call college in the high school um, in their high school and then they've applied and become a freshman here. So normally a running start program college in the high school or if someone is just duly enrolled in high school and in a college, they have probably completed college credit. Now that doesn't affect whether you can apply to any major um, at Western. You just have to meet certain prerequisites. Um, prerequisites could be a class that you have to take, which Ashley will talk about in just a second. A class that you might have to take to declare. For music, our only prerequisite is to an audition. Um, in chemistry, for example, you must take a series of classes before you can apply. So if you take in some classes during your Running Start program or during College of the High School or anything like that, um, you may be able to declare a major right away if you've met those prerequisites. Um, but other than that, it just kind of helps you um, get some GURs out of the way. But I will throw it over to Ashley to talk about what that means in terms of the theater major. Got to unmute myself. Um, so for the theater major, we don't have any of those prerequisites involved. As soon as you get a W number in an email, we can get you declared. Um, but to go along with what Leanne was talking about, one of the things that you'll receive um, once you've confirmed at Western is something called a transfer equivalency report. 
And that will lay out, this is gonna be for students who took APs or IBs or did Running Start. That is gonna show you the courses that you took and what they equate to at Western. And so these um, can include some major or minor courses depending on what you took. This could count for some of our general university requirements, which we call GURs. Those are your maths, your sciences, your humanities, social si sciences, things like that. Um, and we'll show you what that transfers in as. And then if you have courses that you're like, you know what, I think this should transfer into something, but it's not labeled specifically, that's when you talk to other advisors within those um, specific colleges to see what's gonna work. Um, but for theater specifically, come in and declare. We wanna hang out and get you set up with advising right away, get you, get you going. Just make sure that you can be as involved in the arts as possible. And then for dance, there um, is a couple credit prerequisites just to make sure that you feel like you've got a good base and that you're in a certain level of the contemporary series. And to kind of pop off of that, I know right now everything's a little bit weird in terms of how you're getting advising and, and how am I going to enroll? So what we're going to do this summer is orientation and enrollment is going to be online. So we do not know quite yet um, exactly how that's going to work. Um, but, but I, for the music program, will walk all my music students through a very specific enrollment and curriculum. Ashley will most likely walk through CFPA students through what to register if you're interested in, in theater and dance and design. And ideally, we're going to send you things ahead of time to your email um, to kind of talk you through um, uh, how to declare um, what classes to register for and everything like that. And so I'm seeing Maya's question about what do you mean come in and declare? So when you want to declare a major or minor, you have to meet with that office and um, they would talk you through the curriculum. If you've met the prerequisites for that area for theater, obviously she just said that there wasn't any. Um, you go in, meet with them, they talk you through it, and you sign a piece of paper. So what she means is just come into the office, talk to her, and then you just simply sign a piece of paper. Um, so I'm going to jump ahead if that's okay. I'm seeing that Kirsten, hey Kirsten, um, has a question. Um, I would say, uh, I would just answer on here, but I think some of the other music people might have a question too. So the community of composers, we have a lot of composers that came to Western and have graduated and they're in the area. And then we have, of course, our composition faculty. Um, and do you mean, maybe I'll, I'll throw the question to you and then you can write back, but I'm wondering, do you mean, is there a lot of composers, um, the community getting together to work together or just at, just at Western? Um, I'm talking about some of the, like the people who are still there as a composition major. Um, I heard when I was talking to the, two professors in the interview when I applied to be a composition major. He said about that their studios um, hold at least like 20 majors. So I just didn't know um, mm. how big the community was or what sort of classes I can expect to take um, and if I can work with other composition majors. Yeah, absolutely. So the composition um, area will work very similar to your private, your private studio. So you'll have a weekly composition lesson and then you all meet together as either your studio or a master class. So you're able to work one-on-one -on -one, um, with the other composition students and faculty during that master class as well as um, during your lesson. Then we have different things like the composers of Western, which we call the Cal Quartet. So that's why I say composers of Western first. <laughs> Um, the Cal Quartet, um, and you, you compose for these students and they play your works. And there's a lot of, of, of cross things. Maybe you would compose a quartet and so would someone else and you play a concert together, a chamber concert, and you both work on that. Um, so I would say that our music department, which includes composition, of course, I'm so sorry if you're hearing my emails. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, uh, it's really a community of collaboration. Um, and, and sometimes our students are so supportive and collaborative, we kind of have to remind them it won't necessarily be like that in the real world all the time because our students are so supportive of each other. Um, yeah, so, so the community is really good. The students work really, really well together. Um, does that answer your question for the most part? Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I have so many questions. That's okay, go ahead. Um, how often do composition majors get to like 
show off their music and like maybe use the performing arts center or like do they get their public performances? Yeah. So each quarter there is a um, each quarter there's going to be a performance of composition works. And then so the the um, the cow quartet or quintet or whatever is being composed for that quarter will play those works as well as you can put on as many little recitals as you want to do your works as long as it's okay with your instructor. Um, and then you get to have a senior recital of your of your public works, but there's nothing stopping you from being able to to check out space and doing a little studio recital before your senior recital. There's there's nothing wrong with that. And there's so much opportunity to do that. Um, sometimes our orchestra will play compositions and sometimes our bands will play compositions. So it'd be cool for you to be able to do that. I'm going to jump to, oh, this is also you. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I love it. Keep it coming. Uh, so she asked, as an instrument, instrument player, how can I expect my first year to be scheduled for ensemble and music class time, even though I'll have gen ed classes? This is so normal. And, and theater, dance, design, all y'all, like this kind of um, goes to you too. So music department, our classes are pretty structured. Music students will enroll in about five classes that are music classes. Um, and then generally, um, and I know it sounds like a lot, but you, you can do it. I promise you, you can do it. Um, so about five classes of music, and then we'll have a room for about one to two gen eds. Now theater, dance, design, Ashley can speak to that. That's a bit different. It's less stuff, but we promise you not all of your classes are every single day. Not all of them are at the exact same time. So when we look at it, it's not going to be a block schedule like you're in high school right now. Every single day, bam, 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 bam. Um, you might have classes that are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, some classes that are Tuesday, Thursday, some classes, ah, some classes might, might only be one day a week. So we will kind of help you through orientation, which will be later this summer. Look at what your schedule is going to look like. Um, now, I will tell you that when you first get into it, especially music majors, the idea of having to do all this homework and practice time and time to be on ensembles it seems like a lot um and at first you may be kind of overwhelmed and just i just need you to know that's completely normal um but it's more just time management of of hours throughout the day um it is absolutely not impossible and every student asks this question every year kristen so you're not alone um there's a lot more to it that maybe we could get into on our own if that's okay um, or in the fall but um, in the meantime let me throw it to Ashley to talk about gen ed with with theater is that okay yes um, so again like I talked about before some of our uh, we don't necessarily have quite as many classes required at a time as uh, music does so usually what I recommend is anyone coming in try to do two major classes and a GUR, and then if you happen to have a minor, toss those in per quarter. Um, the admissions office is normally, uh, sorry, registrar's office is normally going to recommend around 15 credits a quarter. Of course, it's going to be different for each individual. Sometimes you want to do a little more, sometimes you want to do a little less. Um, so to usually land around 15 credits, um, that's usually around two theater classes, a GUR, and maybe a minor. Or we can add more electives, take more away, things like that. But for the most part, it's pretty flexible to work in the requirements, both for the majors and minors um, alongside those. And especially um, for dance as well, since so many of our courses are performance-based, um, you're gonna be able to have a lot of extra time to be able to work those other um, more academic-y courses alongside those, since so much of your work is gonna be in the studio um, for the dance courses. Hey, Morgan, Morgan Stuckey. I was wondering, I kind of had this before. Are you perhaps Kendall Stuckey? Who auditioned yes, I am. That's okay. I wanted to check. Do you go by Morgan or is it someone else's account? Uh, no, I go by Morgan. Oh, okay. Perfect. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Gonna... Kendall's my sister. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, we're both coming in. Oh, you're muted. Thank you. <laughs> um, are you coming in as music too or are you coming in as something else? No, I'm coming in as theater. Okay, I just wanted to check because I've had I've had it be where they were using someone else's account, and I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, great, because we're different. Um, so yeah. I wanted to answer Kristen's question because I think that um, any other music person that's on here would want to know this. 
So AP music theory. So we're very complicated in the music department and we don't allow anyone to um, test out of theory or oral skills unless you've taken college credit in those classes at a different institution or get at least a three on the AP music theory exam. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to take that exam to get scores. I, I hope that you will be able to. I think that they're working on that. If you get at least a three or above, or you've taken college level classes in theory, oral skills, or keyboarding skills, which is class piano, you qualify for our placement exams, which we will give at the beginning of fall quarter. <laughs> Excuse me, depending on where you place um, in our sequence, that's where, you're, that's where you will start. Um, but in terms of that, uh, it does not exempt you from, from having to take those classes. You just qualify for a placement exam to determine where you start in our sequences. That is a lot of information taken. So let me know if that doesn't make any sense. In terms of music, just to throw it out there, music majors and minors must declare their major in order to enroll in first quarter classes at Western. So because we're gonna be online, most likely this is what's gonna happen. Um, and if you have any friends that are on here, just let them know. So I'll probably send out some information prior to orientation. It'll most likely be a packet. If you are accepted into the music department, you got a new music student guide packet. If you haven't read it, please read it. Um, and before orientation, I will send out some information about how to declare. We will do that and you will be able to enroll regardless if you've declared or not. But come fall quarter, you will need to declare the major. Other majors don't work like that. Other majors and departments normally are, you take certain classes, then you declare, or you come in as a pre-major, then you declare, or theater, you just go in and declare. But for music, our classes are program restricted, major restricted, to make sure that you have, um, let me back up, the reason why we make our classes program restricted is that we do not start at the base level of music. So we have to make sure you meet the fundamentals through the audition, once you pass that audition, we know you meet fundamentals and we know that you're ready to start our courses. So then you have to declare in order to get past that restriction. Um, it's a lot, but um, just know that if you've auditioned and been accepted, I will make sure that you can enroll in classes. So I don't want you to panic about that. I will make sure. Um, I hope that answered your question, Mia. We could definitely talk more if it didn't. Um, other questions, feel free to throw them out or get on video. Is there anybody in studio art or art history? We've had a couple people in chat talk about yeah. um, interests a little bit here and there. I'm interested in, in people that are interested in design. One of the things we run across um, a lot when, when we're doing advising um, is students that are interested in design. They do have some prerequisites um, Oh, hi, Brody. I'll, I'll answer your question in just a second. We do have some students um, that are interested in the design and they do have some prerequisites. And I'm going to ask Chris Criscuolo to put the link up to, or Ashley, could you put the link up to the um, university catalog? Um, oh, great. Congratulations, Taylor. That's a really, you know, people that get waitlisted, that's a big deal. It may not feel like a big deal, but um, it is a big deal to be waitlisted. Congratulations. Um, Brody, can I take music classes or audition without declaring a major? Unfortunately not. You must first pass an audition on a primary instrument or voice to then get into the class. So music theory, oral skills, keyboarding, all of those classes are restricted to those that have been accepted to the department through an audition. Um, and I can talk to you more through that or give you some more information. If you want to follow with me via email, um, I can send you to our website and, and information like that. Ensemble auditions, they're going to be in the fall right before school starts. Right now, we are, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dean Spicer, we are just moving ahead um, with the assumption that we will be in person until we hear otherwise. And so me and Ashley are planning that after, <laughs> we're planning after orientation to just kind of move forward and, unless we hear otherwise. And I know that's maybe not what you want to hear right now but that's um, all the solid information that we can give you. But we are planning on, on doing ensemble auditions in person at the beginning of September until we hear otherwise, we will put 
online audition sign up requirements and everything in July. That's when you'll hear in July. And music majors, you're going to get more emails from me. Please just be, be patient. You're going to get so many emails from me about what are your next steps, hopefully as clear as concise as possible. Um, I'll answer your question, Lucas. I think uh, maybe for Ashley too. Um, Kristen, I'm not sure, but um, <laughs> yes. Hi Brody, yes, non-majors can absolutely audition for ensembles. Ensembles, production, so any theater production, any opera production, anything like that is open to all Western students. The same for our ensembles. Anyone can audition. We also have two or three non-audition ensembles, two choirs, university treble, which means soprano or alto voices or anyone who can sing in that range, and then university tenor bass, which is tenor bass or anyone who can sing in that range, and then Viking pep band. Now that's not a class. Viking pep band is um, an athletic band that doesn't march, but that plays at all of the athletic events. Um, Kirsten, ensemble auditions will be the same weekend as move in. So you'll be able to move in and then audition at the same time. Good question. Everyone always asks that. It'll be the same weekend. So we'll just ask that you plan around your move in, um, but we understand. Um, just to hop in, just because we've gotten a couple art studio questions. There are um, art classes that are available to non-majors. Um, there are some restrictions here and there. So like, I'm just looking at some of our class offerings from the past um, and they do have a glass blowing class, which is pretty rad. Um, they also have things like visual dialogue. Um, they do have some courses that um, have different phase restrictions. So for registration at Western, it gets kind of bumped into different phases to make sure everyone has equal opportunity to be able to register for courses. So some of those art classes, um, sometimes you just have to wait until in the next phase to make sure art majors and minors get into the course and then you can. Um, and then it, um, they're usually pretty explicit about what works as far as um, counting for prerequisites to be able to declare in the major in all of those class listings. Um, so they also have things like ceramics for non-majors or two-dimensional art or drawing for non-majors. So they do have a lot of options. Um, and again, within their catalog and within their courses, they're more explicit about what will count towards being able to declare within their degree and what doesn't. I'm not sure about wood shop classes. Let's look at that for a second. <laughs> One of the things, Ashley mentioned glass blowing, and unfortunately, because <laughs> there's no way to put that up, <laughs> it's not being offered this, this spring or summer, so we'll have to wait to see if it fall. Mm -hmm. um, areas of study that are listed within the art studio major, I'm just gonna list those out. Um, we have ceramics, drawing, fiber arts, mixed media, painting, photography, printmaking, sculpture, and time-based media. So um, as far as specifically woodshop, I'm unsure because that's outside of my building. Um, but who knows, maybe they'll bring in guest artists that'll talk about that or you do that at some of the other levels in maybe smaller forms. I know I've seen a really cool exhibit of um, students who carved spoons and they were the coolest looking spoons I've ever seen. But so that's potentially an element of one of the classes is getting to work with those materials. Um, but something explicitly wood shop, I'm not sure. Um, oh, in terms of uh, some, some of the things that, that I just found sort of blundering along through college when I was a student in college was, um, uh, there are these these courses that when you you know if you just Google I, you know wood shop like you might not find anything right but um, if uh, we have probably uh, Ashley will have to give you the specifics but you know these theater production credits that will fulfill like an arts you are that gives you some um, if you're an art major and you take um, 3D concentrations three dimensional art. Um, there is a, essentially a wood shop in the art department and there's a really great guy who is on our staff who oversees and helps students, you know, execute these complicated uh, projects, learn to use the equipment safely, maintains the equipment, all that kind of stuff. So, um, and I know that if you look in some other colleges and other areas too, um, you'll find all kinds of, of you know, 
people doing things that essentially like woodshop without really calling it woodshop. So just, you know, keep your eyes open and, and kind of listen for the sound of the spinning saws and, and shapers and you'll probably find something you can study with wood. You know? um, and I'll actually jump back in because they're uh, within theater. So each department is going to um, potentially have different student employment opportunities. Um, and so that's something to know is that we'll, we'll potentially have some stuff for you. I know music and theater and dance definitely have some opportunities available both for work study and non-work study. And one of those opportunities with us is to work in our scene shop. And so while it's not specifically a woodworking class, you would be working on helping to build sets, painting, welding. We've got some rock star welders right now. It's awesome. Or that can also be in our costume shop. If you have any sewing experience and that's something you're interested in, our costume shop manager is super eager to just get people in there um, getting to work on costumes. And again, that can be work study or non-work study. Um, so there's other individual little um, sneaky ways that some of that work can get done. Um, but other employment opportunities can be in the office with me or in the box office or as house managers or music has um, different library opportunities um or office opportunities as well so knowing that that's something that i know a lot of students are considering is how do i make some money while i'm at school um is a lot of the departments do have um positions here and there to be able to offer that so even if there's not necessarily woodworking class come work in our scene shop and get to use a bunch of saws and power drills and all that cool stuff oh thanks anna 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 Oh, hey, Lucas, uh, for everyone else's music, um, ensemble audition information will be posted in July. Um, we will post all of the repertoire required. Sometimes we will ask you to just prepare one solo piece. You can use the same piece you audition for the program with. Um, and then we'll ask you maybe for some excerpts from either our band or orchestra information. It's really not uh, too intensive, but we'll post that information at the end of June or July, at the end of June or early July. Um, for auditions in September. Um, is there questions just sometimes we can answer questions about the general university or questions about scholarships or, or really anything right now. <laughs> I have a question, Ashley. <laughs> If I, was, if I was interested in um, in figuring out what classes are required for the theater or dance or design degrees, how would I find that? So you have a couple different options there. You can look at our university catalog, which I shared a little earlier in the conversation, but if you just Google WWU catalog, it's the first thing that comes up. And if you look under the College of Fine and Performing Arts tab, that's where you can see all of our majors and minors. Um, they are working on um, submitting next year's catalog. I think they said May 8th, so that will update and some things will change. For example, the dance major has changed a little bit for next year, um, but you can at least get a good idea of what we offer now. Um, the other things is you can keep checking out our website, um, cfpa.ww.edu. Is that still right, Chris? Yay, I did it! Um, <laughs> And so, oh my gosh, if you guys want to find out some music info, Leanne has catered that site to your every whim. It is oh, a masterpiece. I'm still working. Oh, um, but so a lot of our websites are really comprehensive for a lot of um, application specific stuff, or again, that employment or scholarships. So just don't be afraid to dig around on there. And the second that you have any questions, send emails to um, advisors like Leanne and myself. That's what we're here for is to be able to be a resource for you to feel good about coming here and feeling like you're coming in with both feet in the door. Um, and we're so happy to be able to help however we can. So send us emails. Um, our, oh my gosh, our info is posted all over the websites or um, in our cases, first name, period, last name at www.edu. Or um, that weird one where it's our last name, first name. Either email <laughs> yeah. will get to us. Sometimes it's easier to do first that last name. Yeah. I wanted to ask a Jordan question about the AA. Mm -hmm. So in Washington, we have an agreement with community colleges within Washington that if you complete a certain type of AA degree, that's called an AADTA, 
AA means um, associate in arts degree. DTA, D as in dog, means direct transfer agreement, DTA, direct transfer agreement. And that means that you do not need to complete our general university requirements, which we call GURs. You do not need to complete general university requirements, but you must have earned an AA, which equals um, at that institution, if it equals a DTA, then you have nothing else. So if you've completed the full degree, um, and you're awarded what's called a DTA. Again, one more time, DTA. <laughs> that means you have no GURs to complete. However, like Ashley was talking about, when you order transcripts from your institution and you have them come and they are articulated and they can and they're processed. I'm trying to think about sixty things right now, um, and they're and they're processed. An admissions person will say exactly what your class counts for. And if your degree was awarded a DTA, it'll say DTA and your advisor knows, oh, ding, 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 you don't need to take GURs anymore. So it kind of depends. So Jordan, because your question just says, does an AA cover this? It depends. Um, sometimes there's an AA in science that doesn't, but we just don't know which one you have specifically and you don't need to tell us right now if you don't want to, um, but we would be able to then advise you at orientation to if you have GURs or not. Um, and then to back up even more, um, what we mean is if you did running start or college in the high school, you must order transcripts from that institution. So let's say you did um, running start with Shoreline Community College. You actually have to order and send official transcripts from your high school and from Shoreline. They will not show up on your transcript, it, on your high school transcript. And in addition, um, if you took AP exams, you need to order those scores from College Board. So two things there, order your transcripts from your final transcripts from high school, order final transcripts from your institution that you went to, and then AP scores if you need. Once all of that comes in, and believe me, the university will be sending you emails about it. Um, once that co all comes in, then we will look at your TER, your transfer equivalency report together to determine what classes you have left. Once again, I know that was a lot of information. We love our acronyms. So if we ever say something and you don't understand, please raise your hand or scream at us lightly. Um, and, and we will help you out. Um, once again, Jordan, did that answer your question for the most part? Yes, yay! Um, in terms of music requirements, um, I have worked so hard to make our university catalog as clear as possible. Now, there's certain things that me and Ashley cannot do. We cannot put a table in there that says what you would take fall, winter, and spring every single year. That's just not possible in the coding that is the university catalog right now. But what we can do is if you email us, we can, of course, Jordan, thank you so much for asking. Other people have those questions. Um, but what we can do is we can email you something ahead of time that maybe has a four-year plan. That's, that's the most ideal. We're working on getting everything online right now. I know that Ashley's doing a bang job of trying to get that up there. So um, if you send us an email, we might be able to get that for you right now. Any other questions? Did anybody answer um, Mia about getting a major, major in secondary education along with music oh, education? I was going to, I was going to, yes, okay, I was going to address this. Thank you so much, Dean Spicer. So that doesn't seem repetitive at all, Mia. That's a really good idea. So music education will get you certification, am I mute? No. Music education will get you certification to teach music education from preschool through 12th grade. Um, getting another secondary education would be beneficial if you wanted to teach other subjects besides music because you could get certification in another subject. Um, I would suggest this. Um, I would suggest that you talk to Dr. Uh, Patty Bourne, who's the music education coordinator, and she could talk you through. Um, I'll let Ashley answer that for theater education. Um, but she would talk you through what that would look like because secondary education is within, let me back up, ah, center. Secondary education is a program within the Woodring 
College of Education. And it's just a little program that's in addition to a major. It's just something you add on. So for music education, you do a whole degree in music education, and then you have 34 credits of the secondary education portion. So Mia, what might happen is they may, um, they may ask you if you're gonna complete another major to then have a certification in that, um, in that degree. Am I thinking about that or saying that right, Ashley? I'm not sure if I'm yeah. Um, oh. and, and looking at the addendum that was added, um, yeah. so Woodry and the Cedar, the, the blah, 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 secondary education, um, program also has this kind of own majors and minors. Mm -hmm. Um, so their majors are what are called qualifying endorsements. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, if you just Google WW Woodring endorsements, it'll come up with this list. I'll try to pop the link in or Chris, if you want to be speedy fingers, that'd be great. Um, and it lists all of the different majors that count towards that secondary um, education qualifying endorsement. English is one of them. Theater is one of them. Pass that qualifying that endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I thought, I thought you guys were your own fancy P through 12. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Oh, great. I, I'm, I'm going to keep going then. <laughs> um, and then past that, um, you can then get uh, another endorsement, which is called a secondary endorsement, which is kind of considered a minor. They don't let you do two qualifying just for the sake of getting you out of here in time, but you can then take that secondary endorsement to still be able to be certified to teach that subject in schools, but not necessarily have the insane course load of having two qualifying endorsements. You know so, what I think is the yeah. best thing, sorry, Ashley, <clears throat> for this specific thing. So Keely Matthews is, um, I believe she is still the Woodring person. I think maybe what I'm going to do, no, she's not. Keely, okay. Keely works for us now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> she's the design department advisor now. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. Keely's amazing. Yes. <laughs> so um, we're going to, what we'll do is we have everyone who who registered for this event so we'll try to put it up here but let's get you the contact for the secondary ed department because i know we're doing a good job of explaining it but i think it would be really helpful if we had a really good contact for you to say i want to do music education or theater education but i also want to do another endorsement what does that look like and they'll walk you through that instead of like trying to explain it in our weird creative brains let's just leave it to education any other questions? Anything else that you'd like to know? Oh, Nikki, um, about the about the dress. Um, oh, you never mind. Ash already did that. She's way ahead of me. <laughs> All right. Well, listen. If nobody has any questions, you know how to find us. Um, and I thank you for doing this with us. You're the, uh, you're the first one we've done a Zoom with. So you're the first CFPA Zoom students. And yes. I look forward to seeing you all in the fall. Have a good summer. Thank, Thank you, guys. guys. Thank Bye. you guys Bye. so much. This is very helpful. Awesome. Good. Thanks, everyone. Soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you.